you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. We're going to read verses 20 and 21 in just a few moments. I want to kind of set the stage. Once you get there, you will be, you, you are familiar with the story, but for several years, the king of Israel, King Ahab, has married a woman named Jezebel. Jezebel worships false gods. And what Jezebel has done has brought these false gods, an alternative way of living, an alternative way of existing into the nation of Israel. To do this, she takes people and makes them priests and prophets to this false god and leads basically the whole nation astray. In fact, there's only a few hundred people, a few thousand people out of millions that are not serving Baal and Ashtaroth. And because of this, the land has been in a famine for years. The land has no rain. There has been lack of food. There's been some serious things happen in the nation of Israel. Some unbelievable events have taken place basically because of one woman. How many of you understand that? It doesn't take a whole lot of people to lead everybody astray. One person, even the book of Revelation warns about a Jezebel spirit that crept into one of the churches and led them off. But in this particular place, Jezebel did that. And I want to set the stage because I want you to see that the Lord sends the prophet Elijah along. And it's Elijah's job to bring the nation back to revival. And you know that this city and this nation needs a revival. Yes. Come on, are you with me? I want to say that again. If America ever needed a revival, did you know that foreign countries are training missionaries to come to this nation to evangelize? Yes. That's how unbelievable it's getting. Glory to God. I was invited a few years ago to go up to near Plainview, Texas. And it was an African that had been saved in Africa and filled with the Holy Spirit that God sent him out to West Texas to start evangelizing it. Can you imagine that? And so I went to this church in a storefront to preach for an African man. Hallelujah. Came over from uh, Kenya to, to, to be a missionary to this country. Isn't that unbelievable? Because America has been the missionary nation to the world, and that's been coming to a little bit of an end, and the world's trying to be a missionary evangelist to this country. Somebody give the Lord a praise that we need a revival in this country. And you need to understand what can follow, what can, what can end the revival or end the blessing is following the wrong thing. Am y'all with me? Say amen. So I want to read this and I want to show you something in 1 Kings 18, 20 and 21 because Elijah comes along and he says these words. Uh, so Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Yeah. Everybody shout, follow him. Follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And now all the miraculous that begins to take place and the fire falling from heaven and all the things that begin to take place are to get the people's attention off of following Baal and following something out of line and get their attention back on following the Lord. And because the fire fell and they got their attention back on God, the rain began to come and the blessing began to come and the turnaround began to come in the name of Jesus. There's always a turnaround when you follow the Lord. Anybody want to help me out? Now I want you to go with me and we want to see this again in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, God sends Elijah to Elisha. And what it is, is that the, the anointing is going to begin to transfer from Elijah to Elisha. And let's see what happens in 1 Kings chapter 19. All of this takes place because he decides to, to follow the right thing. How many of you with me? Say amen. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number, let's start in verse number 20 here. 
And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow thee. Say it with me. Then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done unto you? In other words, when Elijah took his mantle and threw it on Elisha, Elisha felt the glory of God. Elisha felt the anointing of God. Elisha felt the move of God. And he said, I'm not going to follow these oxes no more. I'm going to follow what you got. I'm going to follow what the Lord has. The enemy will work on you to follow every kind of thing in the world. But you need to keep your eyes following the Lord Jesus Christ. Following what the Lord wants to do. And what the Lord's after. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Come on. I'm going to tell you that in 2014, all you've got to do every day is make sure you follow the Lord and don't let the devil get you off on some rabbit trail. Give the Lord a crazy praise. Come on. How many of you love the Lord? Say amen. Let's build upon this. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. We're introduced to a guy in this story named Caleb. Caleb is one of only two men that came out of Egypt by putting blood on the doorpost of their houses, one of only two men that actually made it into the promised land. How many of you with me? Say amen. amen. One of only two. Three million Jews died in the wilderness because of lack of faith. They could not enter into the rest of believing God. They couldn't enter in and follow the Lord. They were following a cloud, but they weren't following the Lord. Because when the Lord got ready to lead them into the promised land, they couldn't follow him there. They still had junk on their mind. They still had fussing and fighting on their mind. They still had Egypt on their mind. They still had the past on their mind. And they couldn't follow the Lord into that promised land. How many of you with me say amen? amen? How many of you know there's some people that just can't keep on going and follow the Lord into the next step? And I'm going to tell you, when you're making a step up, it's the job of the devil. The Lord's taking you up the ladder. He's taking you up the mountain. He's taking you to the next realm of glory. He's taking you to the next realm of faith. And you're trying to follow the Lord up this thing. And it's going to be the job of the enemy to pull you back so you quit falling the Lord up the hill. You'll quit falling the Lord across the Jordan. You'll quit falling the Lord across the Red Sea. You'll quit falling the Lord into your next blessing. You'll quit following the Lord into your next breakfast. Don't you let the devil pull you down. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. So I want you to notice that the Bible is very specific in bringing up Caleb's name and what he did to make it into the promised land. What he did to make it across. Only one of two out of three million. One of two out of three million. But my servant, servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, he has followed me fully. Thank you for that one, amen. He has followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land. In other words, he's going to follow me into this promised land. He's going to follow me into the land flowing with milk and honey because he follows me. You want to know the secret? Follow the Lord. You want to know the victory? Follow the Lord. Are you with me? He, I will bring him into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Because he's followed me, I'm going to bless his kids. Because he's followed me, I'm going to bless his grandkids. Because he's followed me, I'm going to bless his descendants all the way down through history simply because he's following me. It doesn't matter if anybody else does. It doesn't matter if anybody else does what they do. It matters what you do. Amen. Come on. Amen. How are you with me? Say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Throw up the next scripture. Glory to God. Numbers 32, 11. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob because they have not wholly followed me. This is the second time that God makes reference to Caleb following the Lord. Nobody else is going to get to come in here. Nobody else in his generation is going to get to enjoy it. Nobody else in his generation is going to live long enough he's going to live long enough to get all of his blessings and get all of his miracles 
because he wholly followed me. I mean, you can follow people to drugs. You can follow them to the bar. You can follow them down the road. You can follow them into junk. You can follow them into all kinds of stuff. Or you can follow the Lord. Give him a crazy praise. Let's keep going because God constantly talks about him in the word of the Lord and makes reference of him in God's word. How many you love the Lord? Say amen. Hallelujah. Numbers 32, 12. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kinzanite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. Three times. He wants you to know what following the Lord does. It gets you out of the wilderness. It gets you out of the junk. And it gets you into the promised land of Almighty God. God's going to lead you to the victory. God's going to lead you to the healing. God's going to lead you to the miracle. God's going to lead you to the breakthrough. He leadeth me to green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He's going to get you there. You've got to follow him there. Huh? Huh? How many of you love Jesus? Say amen. amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy 136. God's telling that nobody's going to cross over. Nobody's going to make it except Caleb, the son of Javuna. He shall see it. To him will I give the land that he had trodden upon and to his children because he wholly followed the Lord. I mean, this is now the fourth time that God says, I'm giving it to him because he's following me. He wants you to get it into your mind that following the Lord pays off. People come over here and get you to follow this and to follow that and go this direction and go that direction. What you need to do is stay in the direction God called you to be in. He wholly followed the Lord. Stay with me. How many love the Lord? Say amen. Hallelujah to God. Look at Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 through 9. Hallelujah. Joshua 14, 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenzanite said unto Joshua, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea. Look at verse 7. Forty years old when, when I was when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to uh, spy out the land and I brought him word again as was in my heart what was the word that was in his heart we're able to kill them giants we're able to possess the land those giants are too big we can do this we can take it that was what was in my heart you better be careful what's in somebody's heart they'll show it to you with their mouth Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord. They were talking their negative stuff and their hearts melted and they stopped following the Lord because of what they heard, but I kept on following the Lord. Come on, say that with me. I'm going to keep on following the Lord. Come on, are you with me? Say it again. I'm going to keep on following the Lord, my God. Verse number nine. Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereupon your feet have trodden shall be your inheritance forever and your children's forever because you wholly followed the Lord your God. You want your kids to get blessed? Follow the Lord. You want God to start giving your children the inheritance of his promises? You follow the Lord. Come on. When you follow anger, when you follow junk, when you follow the world, God cannot release his best to you, neither can he give your children all that they need to have. But when you follow the Lord, he can bless you and he can bless your kids. Read it right there for yourself. Look at verse 14. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenzanite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord his God. Woo! Anybody getting this so far? Now hang on to your hat. Let's jump into the word of God. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 2. 10 verse 38. Matthew 10 verse 38. He that takes up not his cross and follows not after me is not worthy of me. So if you're not following the Lord, you're not worthy of his blessing. Come on. 
But when you know you're following the Lord, you have the right to say, I stand here, I'm following the Lord, and I'm worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I'm going to get it because I'm worthy. But the enemy is going to send you out if he can on rabbit trails. He's going to get you following other directions. The devil's got a million paths. God's got one path. You got to follow the Lord. Matthew 12, 15. When Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from there. Great multitudes. Come on, say it with me. Followed him and he healed them all. Who did he heal? Those that followed him. How many of them he healed? Everybody that followed him. If they didn't follow him, they didn't get healed. But if they followed him, they got healed. Give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah. Stay with me. Matthew 9, 2. Behold, they brought unto him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. Jesus said to his faith, uh, the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer. Thy sons, thy sins are forgiven you. I don't know where they got that scripture from. God bless them anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 19, verse number 2. John 8, 12, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me, listen carefully, shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The enemy wants you walking out in the dark. He'll get you responding that to things that you just don't even need to get even where near. He'll get you walking down trails you don't even need to go. Because we need to walk with God and walk after the Lord. Huh? I'm going to tell you that every kind of prayer request is going to increase in your life. Because the world is going to get worse and worse. I get, I get dozens and dozens a week. Pray for this. Pray for that. People are dying. People all over the place. People are dying. They're calling people that have faith. That they hear the word of God. I've got authors of books that are watching the broadcast, sending books that are watching our broadcast on Sundays and join the conversation for us to critique their books about the word of God. That's interesting, isn't it? Sending us books to read about grace and to read about faith and wanting us to decide what's going on. If it's good, let me know. Let me know if I'm balanced. Let me know based upon what they're not because of us, but because of what God's trying to do in this place. Come on, have you with me, say amen. What God wants to do for you. The world is going to get crazy. It's our job to make sure that we're going to follow Jesus right through every day, right through every event, right through every situation, right through every circumstance. We're just going to keep following the Lord and inherit the promised land. Are you with me now? Matthew 19, 2, great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Where is there? Following him. Where is the place of the miracle? Following the Lord. Where is the place called there? There I get my blessing. There I get my breakthrough. There I get my turnaround. Where is that place called there for me? Where is the will of God for me? Follow the Lord. Don't follow your anger. Don't follow your strife. Every day this place gets calls for miracles and healings and breakthroughs. My God, we ought to have an atmosphere that prays for them and believes God for them because many of them don't even know how to follow God. They're just trying to get a miracle. Lift your hands and just give the Lord a crazy praise. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus said unto them, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness. I think they threw that up already. But shall have the light of life. And everybody said amen. amen. John chapter 10, verse 4. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him. How many believe you're God's sheep? Yes. They follow him. They know his voice. Yes. They follow him. They know his voice. They follow him. They know his voice. Woo! Hallelujah. Look at verse 5. A stranger they'll not follow. <laughs> did you know? Did you know? Look at me. I want you to listen to me. A mom and dad 
can raise a child and they know that voice of that mom and dad and they're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old and a stranger come along and they'll follow the voice of that stranger into a mistake, into a mess and not listen to the voice of their parents. Anybody want to talk to me? Anybody want to say amen? Somebody come along and, and just give them a whole nother. Somebody come along and say something that is not the church and not the way it is and not the way it's supposed to be and not and not and not and not and not what it's called to do. Come on. Or come in and say something to you like you're not going to make it. Don't follow those voices. Say you're going to die. Don't follow that voice. Don't follow the voice of death. Follow the voice of life. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. Don't follow the voice of discouragement and disappointment. Don't follow the voice. Come on, follow the voice of the Lord. He said, the stranger, they're not following. They'll run from him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my daddy. Wait a minute, that's my mother. Wait a minute, that's my brother. Wait a minute, that's my family member. I'm running from this strange voice. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is what God wants. I'm running from that strange voice. Lift the Lord's name up and give him a crazy praise. Amen. Amen. I'm telling the truth. The voice of a stranger, the enough. Oh, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. This is, the whole, this is the whole matter. My sheep know my voice. I know them. They follow me. That should be the whole, that should be the whole experience right there. That's, that's a little bit of scripture, but it's huge. My sheep know my voice. I know them. They follow me. My sheep know my voice. I know them. They follow me. Come on, let's try it together. My sheep know my voice. Oh, I can't do it now. They took the scripture off. My sheep know my voice. I, uh, they hear me. I follow them. Amen. Hallelujah. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. John chapter 21, verse 19 through 22. Then spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto them, follow me. He said, I'm going to die. Follow me. Hmm. Verse 20, then Peter turning about seeth the disciple that Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper. That's John. And said, Lord, which is he that betrays you? Who is he that betrayed you? That's who Peter's want to know. Peter's want to know who's betraying you. He, Peter's asking some of the dumbest questions. How many, know, how many know about Peter? He does some of the dumbest things in the world. And he wants to know. Uh, I, want, I want you to tell me who's going to betray you. I want in on the inside. Who's going to betray you? Peter see him said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? What shall, Jesus, he went on, going on to say, he said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Jesus said, if he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow you me. Follow thou me. It doesn't matter who is going to betray me. It doesn't matter what John's going to do. It don't matter who betrayed me. It don't matter. This stuff don't matter. What matters is you follow me, Peter. Come on. Say it with me. You follow me. Glory to God. That's what matters. You follow me. Amen? Follow thou me. Say it out loud. Follow thou me. Why? Because that's where you get your healing. That's where you don't stumble in the dark. The Bible says if you're following me, you will never stumble. If you follow me, you'll never stumble. I remember I was driving by a bar. I saw a man's car that had been coming a little bit to the church at the bar. He sure was surprised when I walked inside the bar. Sit down on the bar stool right beside him. He said, Pastor Randy, what are you doing here? I said, I came to see you. And I said, I know that Jesus followed you in here, so I'm following Jesus in here to see you. His eyes got pretty dadgum big. <laughs> By the way, he left. 1 Thessalonians 5.15. How many staying with me? Say amen. See that, render, that none render evil for evil unto any man, but follow that which is good, both among yourselves and with all men. Monday morning, God gave me this message about 7.30 in the morning. I'm on my table, and these scriptures, you just write them down, one right after another. God is so good, amen? Follow. 3 John chapter 1, verse 11. Don't look for chapter 2. There's not one. 
3 John 11, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, follow that which is good. He that does good is of God. He that does evil has not seen God. They've not seen. They can say they have, but they haven't seen God. I mean, stay with me. Philippians 3.12, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but what does it say? I'm following after. I'm following what is he following? That I may apprehend that which I'm apprehending to Christ. I'm following to get a hold of why Christ got a hold of me. I want to get a hold of the reason why that Christ got a hold of me. I want to comprehend why Christ chose me. You didn't choose him, he chose you. He said, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. You weren't seeking God, God was seeking you, sweet baby. You weren't looking for God, he was looking for you. You weren't even born yet when he sent Jesus to die for me and you. Come on, that's worth shouting about. You hadn't even done wrong and he bore it. You hadn't even done wrong yet and he took care of it. You never made a mistake, but he took care of it before you ever did it. Woo, glory to God, hallelujah. Philippians 3, 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended this one thing I do. Forget those things that are behind. Reach forth to those things that are before me. I'm gonna press toward that mark of the prize. I'm following to get it. I'm following the Lord to get it. I'm following after the Lord like Caleb did so I can get the promised land so that my, I'll be blessed. My kids will be blessed. because your kids are going to need to be blessed if God comes in the next generation with the debt, with the this and with that and with that and with this and this and that. They're going to need the blessing of the Lord on them. They're not going to, you don't want them just to try to start up on their own because they didn't get a blessing coming down through you. The Bible says that a righteous man gives to his children's children. God wants to bless a righteous man so much that he even can bless his grandkids. Read the word of God. That's what it says about a righteous man. Hallelujah to God. Come on, somebody say amen. I mean, it just flows down. Those blessings just flow and flow and flow. Caleb had it because he followed the Lord. Hmm. Mm. Stay with me. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Turn with me in your Bibles. Hallelujah to God. Ephesians 5.1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. I promise you, I do not want to go to Six Flags. How many of y'all understand that? At my age, I don't want to go to six. I told my wife, the other day, let's me and you go to Disneyland. She said, why? I said, baby, we can ride the rides together. She said, no. I said, come on, baby. We'll ride the kids' rides. She said, you'd look like an idiot on them kids' rides. I said, I know. Let's go. You can take pictures and show the church. How many you with me? But I remember back in the 60s when it opened and my family decided to go. We couldn't even go to sleep the night before but being little kids going to Six Flags for the first time. I-20 wasn't even built yet. We were having to go down old Highway 80, which means you had to go through every town and pass the, what was it, the white buffalo? White elephant. I knew it was some kind of animal. And then when you finally got down the deal, you could finally we would get to Stuckey's. Anybody know what that is? Look at these young people going, I ain't got a clue, I ain't got a clue. I ain't got, I'm talking to you about the promised land, sweet baby. There's one right past the gates of Pearl, the Stuckies. Got that peanut log just a waiting on you right there. Right when you get into Stuckies, glory to God, you won't have to pay for it, amen. And we'd go to Stuckey's. We'd get a mall or we'd get something, you know. And we was going to Six Flags over Texas. How many with? They had maybe 10 rides back in them days. You know what? You rode a mosquito. You rode a... How many remember the canoe ride? I mean, you had to do all the work. You was on that canoe and you had to row it. That ain't no ride. I know it was. How many with me? We probably didn't even have an air conditioner in the car. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. We, got, we probably ate bologna sandwiches on the way. God help us. How many with me? But we was going to Six Flags. We was kids. We couldn't even go to sleep. 
That's why God says be followers of God as dear children as like, like little kids. Get excited about following God. Get like a little kid going to Six Flags or Disneyland or Boston or wherever you're going. Lord God, I'm excited. I'm going with God. Let's say that again. I'm going with God. First time I ever took Fonda to a baseball game, she got nachos this big. You ought to have seen her when I brought them up to her. Her saliva started coming out the sides of her mouth. She started trembling and shaking all over because she, oh, how many understand? How many, just like a little kid, just the first time we ever went on an airplane together, she was just shaking all over. She couldn't even sleep the night before. She was like a little kid following me around. That's how we need to follow God like a little kid as dear children, excited about getting into the following God, excited about following. That's why the devil can talk us out of following God because we're not excited about talking, following God. We get all raised up about this and that or the other and lose our excitement about following God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many love Jesus? Stay with me, stay with me. I'm almost through. Glory to God. Hebrews 6, 12. See that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit promises. You follow God and you are to follow people that have faith and patience. And you know it takes faith and patience to be a Christian. And you know it takes faith and patience to work with Christians. How many you know it takes faith and patience to be married? How many you know it takes faith and patience to raise kids? And then if you've got to raise your grandkids, it takes a little bit more faith and patience. How many you know it takes faith and patience to work a job? How many you know it takes faith and patience to handle your money? Everybody say faith and patience. That's what you follow. Is that what it says? Just hang on. We're almost through. Glory to God. Getting anything out of this? Second Peter 1 Peter 1.16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, lies, stories. We don't follow stories. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You're not following a lie. You're not following a fable. We're following the Lord. That's why I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm asking you to follow the Lord. I'm not here to lead you. I'm just here to help you. I don't want to lead you. The Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How many of y'all agree with that? Say amen. amen. I'd be wary of a minister that said that I'm here to lead you. I'd be wary of a man trying to lead me. I need the Lord to lead and guide me into all. The Spirit will guide me into all truth. Hmm. Almost through. Second Peter 2, 2. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. If you have an amplified Bible, it... It, it's a little out of whack there. It's talking about lustful. It's talking about uh, kind of a sexual type thing. But the literal translation is basically two things. Don't follow destruction and don't follow waste. Don't follow destructive ways or wasteful ways. Stay away from destructive ways and wasteful ways. If you're not careful, you will follow destructive ways and wasteful ways. The enemy will get you into ways that lead to destruction, ways that will lead to waste. Don't follow them by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Don't follow. Don't let the enemy get you in destructive ways or wasteful ways. I'm going to follow the Lord. Say it with me. I'm going to follow the Lord. Why? Because that's where healing is. That's where I don't stumble. I'm telling the truth. Matthew 9, 27, I'm going to finish here. When Jesus departed there, two blind men, what? Followed. When Jesus left there, two blind men, followed. Let's do it together. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed, crying. How many know that when blind men start following, that's really something? You really, won't, you really want it when you're blind, but you're still following. 
You don't even know where you're going, but you know who you're following. <laughs> you don't even really know where you're going to end up, but you know who you're following. It's going to be all right. Follow crying, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Verse 28. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, believe that I'm able to do this. They said, yes, Lord, I believe it. They would have never had that conversation if they had not have followed. And they followed all through town and they followed all the way into the house. Jesus is knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell. They thought it was Avon calling, opened the door. It was Jesus. He walks in and here comes two guys they don't even know walking through the door and they're blind as a bat, but they're following Jesus. Yes. And somebody says, what are y'all doing? They say, we're following Jesus. We're following Jesus. Come on. We're following Jesus. I want you to see who gets it. I want you to see who ends up with the victory. I want you to see who ends up in the promised land. I want you to see whose kids end up being blessed. I want you to see who ends up getting the, the miracles, the healings, the breakthrough, that don't stumble in the dark. I want you to see. I want you to see who gets it, and it's those that follow the Lord. Come on. And when, Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. <laughs> and their eyes were open and Jesus said don't tell nobody how did they get their eyes open while they were blind they decided to follow the Lord how did they get their eyes open when their eyes could not see nothing they decided to follow the Lord they followed him all the way through town. They followed him to a house of a total stranger. They followed him. They had a conversation with him and he opened their eyes and they were completely made whole because they followed. I cannot find nobody that followed the Lord that ended up in defeat. How many you with me say amen? It's following the Lord. I believe that we as a church are on that kind of path. Amen. I'm hoping to God we're on that kind of path. Because if we're not, we're not going to reach the goals and the visions. Of... of the salvations and healings and miracles, we'll be dealing with too much other stuff. We're building that building for one reason only. Not, thank God for my brother Don. Thank God for all of you that have been given. Thank you so much. I think it was last Sunday, just, people just gave $10,125. Came in just for the building alone. Give God a crazy praise. Isn't that, isn't that remarkable? God's good, amen? Faithful and worthy of the glory and the praise. We're not building that building so people can look, drive by and say, hey, they got a building. We're not building the building to look impressive, to look good. It costs too much money to look impressive and good. Even though that it's going to be extremely beautiful. Just look at the cabinets. Even the toilets in this thing are going to be pretty. But we're not, we're not, we're not having all of this stuff. Just, just we're, having, we're doing it for a future. I mean, with me, say amen. amen. We're not doing it so people here can do something. It's so people out there can come in and get something. Amen. Because I'm hoping that, that we put that plugs in there. Don was careful. We put the plugs in there so we could put big screens up in there so that we can put sound systems up in there. We can even use it for an overflow. I don't care if we have to eat off the kitchen counters because there's so many people in the overflow. That's fine with me. But it's just so that we can follow the Lord just a little bit better. The people that let us use the parking lot, they, the guy was here. I said, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They signed an agreement underneath a lawyer that as long as we are here, we can use that parking lot across the street at absolutely no expense. It cannot, it cannot change. Even if they sold it, it cannot be changed. Or we couldn't have done it. We couldn't have built it. I mean, oh, God's a good God. We're not, we're not trying to build a pretty building. We're trying to build a building so that people can do. 
eventually want to roll a baptistry in there because we have better restroom facilities there. We'll baptize people in that building and then they can step right into those restrooms in the name of Jesus and they can change their clothes. Hallelujah. I've thought about just putting a swimming pool out there in the front. We can baptize people after church in the swimming pool on the outside in the summer. They can go inside and change their clothes. I think that'd just be absolutely wonderful. And we'll put a trampoline beside it. They can jump from the trampoline in. Hallelujah. I'm sure that everybody will be baptized every Sunday, every summer, all summer long. I was baptized 16 times this summer. Glory to God. How many with me say amen? That's, that's what I'm believing God for. I'm not just trying to feed people in the building. I'm trying to get people to come for their life to be changed. Amen. That they'll follow Jesus. Amen. You are, they're not. How many love the Lord say amen? amen. Let's stand together. They follow Jesus blind. I love that, don't you? I can't see a thing, but I'm following Jesus. I don't even know where I am, but I know who I'm following. And guess what? You will know where you are, and you will see. Following Jesus, just pure blind. Blind faith, just blind faith. Blind faith. God Almighty. Get back to the reasons for all this. Follow Jesus. Don't you love the Lord? That's why we're here. That's why we're doing it. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. And we'll never stumble. Follow Jesus. And we'll end up seeing. We'll end up in the promises. We'll end up with our children blessed.